Hey everybody, welcome to, welcome back to Over Speed Shop. So we're gonna play around with the Camaro today. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what are some of the things we're gonna work on on this thing today? So here's one of them. If you look back here, you can see the heater hoses are bypassed. So the heater core is bypassed, I should say. So we're gonna be replacing the core, the heater core on this. And don't worry, it's not as bad as what people think. It's not as bad as like a Ranger or a Chevy truck or something. But still kind of a pain, but we'll get into it just to see how hard it is. So one of the other things I want to check out, if you look at this window, when you hit the button to make it go down automatically, watch what happens. See how it kicks down? It doesn't automatically stop properly. And it kind of gets stuck. And let me get to go all the way up here. And you can see how it's not quite all the way up in the corner there. So I gotta check the tracks on it. So that's another thing we we may get into. And one of the other things I wanna to address too is if you look, see how the back is squatting? See, I replaced the front springs and uh, struts with a complete unit that's all one piece. You order it and it comes with a spring and strut attached to it, to it. But the backs are stock springs. So it's sagging a little bit back and I don't like the way it sits or the way it rides because of that. So we may end up doing something to help lower the front of the car a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start with the heater core. I know it's 105 degrees, so why am I replacing the heater core now? Because uh, it needs it. And it's, I'd rather have it done before it gets cold than have to do it when it's cold. So let's go ahead and get into it. And so for the first thing you wanna do, obviously, is disconnect the hoses from the heater core. But luckily for me, my son did that when the heater core burst on him out in San Diego. And you can see, still got the original clamps there on the hoses, and you just put a bypass um, or a union there with some hose clamps. So, and we'll change that once we get the heater core in. So that's gonna bring us around to inside the car. And we should be able to access it. I got the cover on there right now, so I have to take that off. But through here, you should be able to see it, the access panel. So there's a little clip right there on there and one over here, and that drops right down. And you see this door right here. That's where the heater core is at, if I remember right. So, but we gotta get this bottom panel off. I'm gonna remove the, the, uh, Glove box all together so it's out of the way. And then we'll get in here and see about getting that heater core out. To get this lower panel off, there are two plastic connectors, one right here and then one over here somewhere in there right there. So you gotta remove that and it'll drop this panel down here. I don't know if that's gonna record anything or not, but we'll try it. Just have to tool here. There's also a metal clip in the very back that holds this back portion on. I'll show you that in a minute here. So this metal clip, see that nub right there? So once that panel's on, this metal clip clips onto that to hold it in place. And I just dropped it somewhere. It's around here someplace, I'll find there it is. Let's put this back here with the panel everything together so now we can remove this there's a uh, three eight millimeter screws that hold this thing in there's access holes for the middle one if you look up underneath there is an access hole right there for the middle screw so those are seven millimeters so we'll grab a seven millimeter and get that out All right, let's get those let's go ahead get those screws out if it's still recording Start with the middle one that's in the hole. There's one. Two. 
And the last one over here. Three. Now this glove boss comes right out and it's out of your way now. Okay, so there's a bunch of wiring in the way here too, so just gotta be careful when you're in here. And we can unclip it and drop it down, hopefully. But if you look right up in here, there's like three or four of those screws like that that hold this cover in place. So we gotta get all this stuff out of the way so we can actually work. So we'll do that. Oh, there's some more. Is that, yeah, there's the other cover pieces. So one, two, three, four. And there might be another one up underneath the, the, the vacuum lines up here as well. So that's what we gotta do, get that out of there. All right, so we gotta get up in here and uh, get to these bolts or screws that hold this thing in. There's one up here. There's one in the back corner here too. Maybe not. That might clip in. Let's get those first couple out right there and then we'll go from there. I need an extension though, so I will be right back. The other thing I'm gonna do is drop this wire harness down too. Try to stay out of the way of the camera so y'all can see what I'm doing, but I don't know why this one's being so difficult. There it goes. There we go. Get that down out of the way. And we can disconnect these vacuum lines too. They're just a little clip right here that holds them together. These are what control your your blend doors and whatnot too. Now those are out of the way. Now I can look up in there and see if I can see another screw. I think there is one though. Sorry if I'm blocking the view, but I gotta be able to see what I'm doing here too. Well, let's get these uh, these two top ones out and see what happens. Or I'm sorry, there's one up here and one down here. Maybe I'll figure out a good place to put this light at some point. Oh, those are smaller. Those look like they're, I think they, I remember reading somewhere they're 5.5s. Let me go get that real quick. All right, let's see if the 5.5 will work. There you have it, there's a 5.5. One screw. Second screw. Just pop out of there now? Yes it does. Look at that. Okay, so what are we caught on? There we go. So that's not that hard. Two screws and it's just held in by gravity apparently on the other side of it. And so yeah, so there's one more 5.5 millimeter screw up in there. So can you see it? See that right there? That's what holds the, uh, the heater core in. Get that out and then we're done. Well, then we got to put the new one in, obviously. So let's get that out and see what happens. It's real simple, little metal clip. And that should just pop out. Remember, is there a retainer? Somewhere else. Maybe a retainer under the hood. Let's go look at that under the hood. Here, I'll go look under the hood. Okay, so I think I found the hardest part of this job. Look back there, way back, right between the hose or the uh, the two ports for the heater core. 
Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Look back there, there's a screw that holds a clamp to hold those two things together, those two uh, outputs, the two ports for the heater hose. Can't get it to focus, but. So I gotta remove that first, and it looks like it's a, probably another 5.5. I really doubt this is going to come out on video because I'm going to end up blocking it. Try to get a tool back in there to loosen that thing up. Okay, now it's loose. Not exactly 100% sure what that was holding in there. There's this one screw, not that one. One screw, and I don't know. We'll figure out when we get it out. All right, so we got that clamp loose in, and this is loose now, so it should just pop right out. It should just pop right out. <laughs> there it goes. Just twist and turn it a little bit. Get those hoses, the uh, the lines to come out. Ah, oh, there. This vacuum thing right here is kind of in the way. Okay, so just gonna just gonna maneuver it around a little bit. And there you go. Yeah, nice and rusty under there. All right, so there we have it. The heater core is out. You can see how rusty it is down there. So I'm guessing that's probably where it's leaking from. So now we just got to get a new one. Oh, there's the clamp. That's what held it in there. This little clamp. So we'll have to transfer that over to the other one, which we don't have yet. So O'Reilly has them for 80 bucks. And I'll be after my military discount. So, 80 bucks lifetime warranty. I was gonna get it off of uh, Rock Auto, but they only offer like a 12 month warranty. So, and you gotta send it in and send it back. It was only 20 bucks, but I don't want to do this uh, numerous times. I have to pay for it every time. So, this way we'll have a good uh, heater core that's lifetime warranty and we don't have to worry about it. So now he's gonna go pick one out. So I went to Riley's this morning to pick up the new heater core. This is the old one. And I already compared it, made sure it was the right one. I thought this was kind of cool. If you look. It comes with new felt. So I'm gonna wrap this. See where it's supposed to go, right there. So we can add that to it as well. And sit next to it. Compare it, and it is exactly the same, which is cool. I have to tweak the tubes a little bit, almost always have to. But we're ready to go. Get a new uh, heater core in there. Gives us a little difference on the size of it, maybe. Just a little bit of dif different in the design. The bottom tank is a little smaller on the original one. But it'll work. Get her put in. All right, so I already put the clamp on it that goes on the firewall. Now we're gonna add this uh, foam to it, just like this one had in it. It's just a little cushion and a little seal. This goes down at the bottom. And it's sticky back, so. It... All right, so it's all ready to go back in now. Let me get some extra left over. All right, so we got the new uh, heater core. And yes, I got the fan blown because it's 100 degrees in here already. Need a little retainer clip go. I put it over here. There it is. Okay. Found it. So that's going to be going in there too. Okay, back to it. 
So we just gotta try to do this reverse of the way we took it out, and we just gotta work it up in here somehow. In the minimal space you have, so you get it up in there. Get it to rotate. Try to avoid this little vacuum can vacuum canister. be to remove that thing. Let me get a light and find out. Alright, so I got it up in here. I forgot to hit record for the most part, but I just had to squeeze it past and kind of maneuver this thing around a little bit. It's a little vacuum canister. You can see it right here. But we got her up into the slot now. Now he's gonna feed her through the firewall and into position. Let's go check out the front, make sure it's out where it needs to be. It's almost all, all the way. Yeah, there's the bracket. It's out now. So it should be attached at where it needs to go. Got a little bit of the insulation and pulled it out with it, but. Tuck that back in, and the clip is kind of... Okay, I have to push that in there and get the clip in on the inside, so let's do that. left is putting the cover on. And like I said like before the cover just slides up in there held in with two bolts or two screws I should say. One screw And two screws. So that's it for that. I have to hook up the vacuum. I pulled the vacuum line off this little canister thing. So I put that back on. And it's this, uh, this orange one right here. That's got to go back on and reconnected, covering everything. But that's it for this for the inside. So it's really not that hard. So let's go hook up the hoses. I don't know how much this should be a C because I'm be blocking most of the time, but the little brackets back there, you gotta get the screw started. It holds it in place. Alright, that got started now. Alright, cool. That's a pain in the butt. Let me see if I can get you back there so you can see what I was just doing. Look back there, right in the middle. See a little screw right between the two tubes? That holds them in place. So that's what I was tightening, it was a pain in the butt. All right, so basically all I was about to do is uh, disconnect this bypass right here and reconnect the hoses to the ports. It's pretty easy to, to do because one's a 5 eighths and one's a, set, a 3 quarter. So we just gotta get them on there and get that uh, Bypass out of there. Just it yeah, it's not tight at all. Surprised this ain't leaking. One 
back on. Ah. Alright. Oh dang it. I thought the hose clamps fell off, but only one did. See if I get these clamps on here now. And they make specific uh, pair of clamp pliers for these things, but I don't have any. I got the, uh, the ones with the long cable on them. Clamped on where it needs to be. No one more. Alright, look at that. So as you can see now that my hands are out of the way, both those clamps are on. Last thing to do is tire it up and see how it runs. Make sure it doesn't leak. All right, so I just topped out the coolant. So let's go ahead and fire it up and look for leaks. Yeah. Main place we obviously want to watch for is under the dash. We're gonna check under the hood too where the hoses connect. So let's go check. Keep an eye on this under here. And then uh, go check underneath the hood. All right, so back up underneath the hood. You can see nothing dripping down. If we want to get, get some pressure in it first. But yeah, well, I'll heat up here and uh, I'll come back and let you know. Take it for a drive, maybe too. I was hearing a hissing under the dash over here. I forgot the vacuum lines were disconnected. Let's try this again. All right. Get the AC kicking because it's hot. Let's go for a little spin around the block and heat up the car. All right, so that was a successful drive. The heat is working. Um, I turned it on just to see, but that was way too hot in this uh, 100 and plus 110 degree day. So temperature's normal, up around like 210-ish, which is normal for these cars. But uh, overall, yeah, got a good heater core now. And I don't see any coolant coming in here. Looks like I get under the hood. I cleaned up the floor to make sure if I do, if we do have any leaks, I'm gonna see it. So now it's got the temperature and pressurized. We should be good to tell if there's any leaks. All right, so far so good. Those hoses are not leaking. You can see some coolant down there, but that's from uh, when I pulled the hose off or the, the uh, union off. So there's a little bit of coolant down there. You can smell on the exhaust down there too, but that's just gonna be part of it. But so overall, yeah, we're done. The heater core's been replaced. I just gotta put the glove box back on. And that'll do it for this uh, pretty much step-by-step -step uh, video on how to replace the heater core on a 93 to 2002 Camaro or Firebird for an F-body. So it wasn't that hard. You can get to it pretty easily inside the, once you remove that, uh, the glove box. So overall, it's not a bad job. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like down there. Leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do, what I can do better. And subscribe while you're at it. So until next time, I will see y'all later.